Have you ever had a variegated plant turn green? Well, that process is called reversion. And in this video, I'm going to explain what it is, why it happens, and what you can do about it. Imagine a native field of plants. Almost every one of them will have green leaves. Some will be lighter green and some darker green, but they're all green. The reason for all this green is chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is a chemical that allows the plant to turn light into food energy. And the more chlorophyll a plant has, the more food it can make. It turns out that chlorophyll is green. Plant leaves absorb mostly the blue and red light and give off the green light. And that's why they look green. Plants with more green can make more food and as a result they grow better. That's why most plants in nature have green leaves. Every once in a while a mutation happens that results in less chlorophyll. The plant might look redder or it might look almost white. These plants can't produce as much food, they're not as healthy, and in nature they don't usually survive. But gardeners and nurserymen love unusual plants, so when they see such a mutation, they collect it and grow it in a greenhouse where the plant gets lots of protection and extra food. It can survive in these protected areas, and they can also survive in our gardens. This brings us to the topic of reversion. Many of these mutations are not very stable. Remember that these are weaker plants with less food production. They have a natural genetic tendency to revert back to all green. This change of going back to the native coloration is called reversion. When this happens, the new shoot has more chlorophyll. It's able to make more food and grow faster than the rest of the plant. If left alone, the green part of such plants will take over, and in a few years, the whole plant will be green. In both our gardens and in nature, the fully green plant survives better than the mutation. To prevent this from happening, gardeners need to intervene and remove the new green growth before it takes over. Let's have a look at some examples, and then I'll show you what to do when it happens in your garden. The Harlequin Norway Maple is very popular because of its colorful variegated leaves. What you see here is a row of Harlequin Maples. At one point, all the trees had the same variegated leaves, but then the trees started to revert to green, and nobody corrected the problem. You can see that now, much of the trees are green, and each year the percent of green will increase. Variegated euonymus are also very popular in the garden, but they have a tendency to revert. Here you can see the green leaves starting in the center of the picture. The normal coloration of this cultivar is a green with white edging. Not all reversions involve leaf color. This is the common dwarf Alberta spruce, which normally has very small needles and short branches. But when it reverts, which is quite common, the branch will start growing normal large needles and the branches will be larger. The problem was not corrected in this case and the normal form is starting to take over. When this happens, uninformed gardeners describe this as a new tree growing out of their tree, but it's all the same tree. This reverted hosta called Paradigm is a bit unique. Leaf A, the one on the left, is the normal coloration. It has a chartreuse center with a darker green edge. Leaf B has lost all of its green and now is fully chartreuse. Leaf C is all green. I'm going to make a separate video to show you how to deal with this plant, but it's quite unusual to see three color forms on the same plant. Five years ago, this whole plant looked like leaf A. This Japanese maple is normally red and has very finely cut leaves. It's starting to revert to a more normal green with larger leaves. This evergreen cultivar has yellow tips on the branches, but this tree has almost completely reverted to green. This little piece is the only yellow part left. This is a really nice little sedum, and it has a nice white and green leaf, but it reverts to all green very easily. 
Here's another clump that's completely green. I used to pull the green leaves out to try and preserve the original cultivar, but it just became too much work. I now have one clump in the garden with the original coloration, and I do pull out all the new green shoots. But this larger clump, I just leave it alone and let it go green. It's just too much work to stop the reversion. This larger sedum normally has green leaves with yellow edge, but a couple of the stems have turned all yellow. The best thing to do is to remove these yellow stems and take them out right down to the ground. Now you could try rooting these, but since they have no green on them, it's unlikely that they will grow. So what causes reversion? Well, there are two possible causes. The first is genetics. Some mutations are just very unstable. They revert very easily back to their original color. Other mutations are quite stable, but every once in a while, they still revert. The second reason is climatic. Something in the environment triggers reversion. Now, you have no control over either of these causes. All you can do is select a good plant that has a stable mutation and then correct any problem you see. Correcting the problem is easy. Cut out the reverted portion. The tricky part is that you need to get all of the reverted part. If you leave even a small dormant bud from the green part, it will start to grow again. On a woody plant, cut all the way back to the main branch. On herbaceous plants, like perennials and house plants, cut back to the main plant or even all the way back to the root system. On plants with very tight crowns, like ornamental grasses and hostas, you may need to cut the crown up so that you can remove the reverted part of the rhizome. Check your plants annually and cut out all the offended pieces as soon as you see them. Don't let it grow in the hopes that it will fix itself. It will only get worse, and while you wait, the reverted part will become stronger and stronger. If you have a plant that reverts every year, consider replacing it with something that takes less care. If you're buying a tree, stick to cultivars that are stable. I'd love to have a harlequin maple, but I wouldn't buy one because I have never seen one that does not revert. I have some other videos where I show you in detail how to correct a reverted plant. Just click on the playlist in the top right hand corner to my other pruning videos. The more you learn about gardening, the more fun you will have. Happy gardening!